Hello, it's Green Math. We're going to go over the rest of this homework on chapter 2, which is basically just logic. So let's go. Um, <clears throat> page 37, number 12. The logic operators NAND and NOR are defined as the negation of AND and OR, respectively. Um, they're used in digital blah 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 blah. Okay, the true tables for NAND and OR. Okay, so um, this is something you did in ninth grade computer science, I think. So, but you know, hey, whatever. Um, what is NAND? Um, well, we can do P and Q. We can do P and Q. And um, NAND is, and I'm sure there's uh, cool people have like a symbol for this, but um, you know, I'm just gonna call it NAND. Is um, just the negation of P and Q. So okay. If you just say it like that, maybe there's there's really nothing to talk about. Oops. Um, so okay, give me one second. True, false, true, false. What's the true table for and? Of course, it's true. Um, false, false, false. And the truth table for nand, therefore, is the negation of this. So this is false. True, true, true. <coughs> And, uh, okay, also we can do uh, or while we're at it, so what is P or Q? It's um, uh, true, uh, blah, 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 true, 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 uh, false, of course, and so P nor Q, um, so that's uh, sort of like not P nor Q is the English way of saying it is the negation of this, so it's like false, 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 false true. Okay, that's all you had to do for this problem. But, I don't know, it makes the problem kind of boring or something. Uh, what's the significance of NAND and NOR? Why should I care about them? Why are they kind of interesting? Um, well, what's interesting about them is, okay, you, you get a couple of equivalencies, of course. You get, um, you know, P, uh, let's take NOR, for example. So, P NOR Q is logically equivalent to, uh, as we just said, not a P or um, Q. Uh, okay. And yeah, that means that uh, by sort of uh, flipping the negation, it means that uh, also I can express P or Q as just like not uh, P nor Q. Okay, well that sort of means that if I wanted to, I could, you know, dispense with the um, disjunction and simply speak in terms of nots and nors. But I think what gets really exciting is, okay, well, what is nor? It's sort of, it's only true when they're both false, is, is kind of the idea. So, um, uh, true nor true is false, uh, true nor false is false, false nor true is false, but false nor false is, is, is true. So, uh, if you make a truth table for P and P nor P, something uh, really kind of exciting happens. Well, okay, exciting. Uh, this is true false, but now, what are you doing? You're noring uh, true with itself, which is false, but when you um, nor uh, false uh, with false, you get uh, true. So in fact, the um, truth table for P nor P uh, shows that it is logically equivalent to not P. So that's kind of very cool. What we have now is sort of a, a binary connective um, which can uh, capture the sort of unary connective, not P. So not P is, um, yes, it's P nor P. So putting these uh, two facts together mean that um, we can express everything in terms of nors. I, I think you do this in adequate computer science, you actually build an entire logic gate out of just nors. That's because nor alone, alternatively NAND, uh, are sufficient uh, it's kind of like a, a magic binary connective in that um, using it you can you can capture and express all other uh, connectives because um, well I'll leave it at that okay uh, good uh, more page forty three so that was just like can you do true tables I think so um, then the <clears throat> the next section was all that logical equivalence I try to keep these problems down to like a bare minimum, but I bet I bet you think that I, I didn't bare minimum them enough. Let's let's go. Which of the following statements are tautologies? So seven a. What do we got? Um, P arrow um, bracket uh, not P arrow Q. Cha cha cha. So seven um, a P arrow not P arrow Q. Is this a tautology? 
Um, now, you don't have to make a true table. You could make a true table, and if you made a true table and all of the, the truth values in the, in the column associated with that true table were uh, true, then you would know it's a tautology, but you know, that's not the only way uh, to know it's a tautology. One thing we might do is to convert the arrow. Uh, I think the answer is going to turn, well, I don't know, let's see. Um, so, uh, so P, um, so, okay, so I'll, I'll rewrite this as um, not P or, so P arrow something is not P or that thing. Okay, if, I'm, if I want everyone to understand, then maybe I should go in, in, in small steps. So that's just uh, using the, the well-known logical uh, equivalence that X arrow Y is logically equivalent to um, not X or Y, which is something that we showed uh, in the video. And then I can do the same thing here, right? So this becomes not P or, well, this can be written as uh, P uh, or uh, Q. And uh, because uh, or is, is uh, sort of associative uh, and, and commutative, this, the brackets kind of can be dropped. And this is saying that not P or P or Q. And of course, since P or not P must be true, then this is in fact a tautology. That seems like the fastest way to me. Alternatively, you can just think about it. You can sort of say to yourself, all right, if P, uh, one thing you can do is you can try to make it false. This is more of a kind of a computer science way of doing things. Uh, which is actually uh, kind of interesting, right? You sort of say, all right, let me try to prove that this is a tautology, let me try to make it false. And if I fail in making it false, then it must be always true. Well, how could it be false? Uh, well, the only way for a conditional to be false is if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So therefore, let's make that true, and let's try to make this false. I put the F on top of that arrow. Well, how do I make this uh, false? Well, the only way to make a conditional false is to make the antecedent true and the consequent false. So that means I need to make this uh, not P thing true, um, but and 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 Q uh, and Q false. But to make not P true means making P false. And so I've just determined that the only way uh, that this uh, sentence will be a um, will be false is if uh, P is true, but P is also false. In other words, I fail to, to falsify the statement, therefore it's a tautology. That's kind of deep. Uh, no, no I, I think about it. It's not deep, but it is a little thing that you may be learning while watching this video, convincing you that it is not a waste of time to do so, though it may be. Next, uh, this one says P arrow Q, if and only if this 70 not um, P and not Q, not P and not Q, something like that. Let me just make sure I don't make a copy error. P arrow Q, uh, if and only if not P and not Q. Yeah, so uh, what's up with this? Is this a tautology? Well, what I'm tempted to do is to distribute this uh, through, and when I do that, I get not P or Q which is logically equivalent to P arrow Q. Therefore, I'm gonna just stop and declare this uh, a tautology because um, uh, whenever, uh, if P then Q is true, then this will be true as well because these, since these are logically equivalent and these two are logically equivalent uh, because of the, the De Morgan's laws. So that's kind of uh, easy also. All right, good, 1321, I wanted this video to be fast. 13, produce the truth table for the following proposition. Is it a tautology? Oh, I, I really made you do an actual truth table. I feel kind of bad now. Um, so, what do we got? True, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. And do we have a, do we, are we really going to do this whole thing? I guess we are. <coughs> not Q, P and not Q, not Q, uh, P and not Q, and um, P or Q. Oh man. And then the final one is P and not Q, P and not Q arrow. Uh, P or Q. Okay, let's go. True table's not going to make itself. Not Q, this is false. True, false, true. This uh, is. Uh, now I'm ending together columns one and three. So that's uh, false, true, false, false, and um, yeah. then this is uh, just true, 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 false, 
And now I'm doing this column, arrow, this column, false, arrow, anything, is, this is just all, these are just all true. So I just did it really fast because false, arrow, anything is true, and true, arrow, true is true. Therefore, what was the goal of this problem number 13? It was to show that it is a tautology, or it asked, is it a, tauto is it a tautology? And the answer is yes. That's kind of like the long, methodical way of doing it. All right, now there are a whole bunch of little questions. I'm just going to read them out loud and answer them. 21. Uh, suppose the final column in the truth table for a statement contains an F. Then the statement is not a tautology, but is a contradiction. God says, stop trying to trick me. It's not a tautology, but it doesn't make it a contradiction, which is not everyone uses that term, but he's using a contradiction uh, to refer to a sentence of propositional logic, which is always false. Um, but uh, if there's a single F, it just means that it's not a tautology, but it doesn't make it a contradiction. Therefore, 21A, false. 21B, when asserting that an implication is true, we cannot automatically assume that the hypothesis is true, nor can we automatically assume that the conclusion is true. Correct. I don't call them hypothesis and conclusion, I call them antecedent and consequence, because I think I want to use words like conclusion uh, to refer to something else, which is the conclusion of an argument, and a hypothesis is already too much of a loaded term. But uh, yeah, when you know that uh, if I happen to know uh, that P arrow Q is true, I can't really say much about the truth value of P or Q, um, because P could be uh, true, because it could be true arrow true, but P could also be false. And Q could be true, because it could be true arrow true, but Q could also be false, because false arrow false is true. So that's, uh, so the um, 21B is, is true. That's, that's a correct statement that Gossett makes. Uh, 21C, the op logic operator and has higher precedence than or. I don't care about this sort of thing, precedence, I don't know, that's a matter of convention, no standard on that. Uh, if both the original uh, implication, P arrow Q, and its inverse are true, then all four derived implications are true. Yeah, if the conditional is true, then the contrapositive is also true, but if the inverse is true, then that makes the converse true, because they're logically equivalent to each other, so if both a statement and its inverse are true, then all four of them are true. So that's uh, true for uh, 21D. 21E, two statements are logically equivalent if... Uh, this is a stupid question. Um, these are all a little bit dumb. The independent. If the hypothesis of an implication is false, then the implication is true, independent of the truth value of the conclusion. That is correct, Gossett. 21F, I agree. Uh, if the antecedent is false, then the conditional is automatically true. Okay, um, should potentially pause the, let's pause the video, come back in one second. Okay, uh, we're back for two more little problems about um, logical argumentation. Okay, this is not a logic textbook, um, so I don't really like exactly the notation that he uses uh, and the style a little bit here and there, because I teach a logic class, I'm a little bit picky about this. So uh, I'm going to answer this question maybe a little bit differently than, than was intended or than how you probably already uh, um, answered it. But anyway, there was a problem 4L. The directions were simply use truth tables to prove the underlying tautologies for each of the fundamental logical equivalencies. And I think he says something like, um, <clears throat> under, under, if you look up, uh, what he means by uh, law of addition, uh, on the previous page, he says the law of addition, he writes this very obscurely, in my opinion, as he says this is if and only if true, okay, which is kind of like, okay, fine, sure, if and only if true, it's just another way of saying that this is a tautology. So instead of writing uh, if and only if uh, true, I'll just prove that this is a tautology. And uh, okay, you can just make a truth table and you can show uh, that it's true. Uh, I think a, sort of a, a, a better way of thinking about this, but he doesn't really get into this, is, is this notion of a logical argument, which was what came up in the video. Um, so uh, I think a better way, uh, we're gonna go over this, we did go over this in my logic class, we will go over this in logic if you take it next year, but if you are taking this class now and you, you don't take logic next year, then, uh, or you didn't already, then uh, let's just a two minute uh, lesson on this. Um, really, what's going on here, I think the, the clearest way to explain uh, what's happening is to say that this is a valid uh, argument. 
And that, that seems clearer to me than uh, saying that this is tautology. Of course, it's kind of like the same thing, right? Because when I, by claiming that this is a valid argument, I mean that whenever this is true, this is true. But since whenever this is true, this is true, it's also um, correct to say that the sentence itself is a tautology. Okay, uh, I won't go into that in too much detail, but basically, yeah, you, you just do it, right? You say, okay, uh, here's P, here's Q, here's uh, the truth table for this. So I get true, false, true, false, and then uh, P or Q, and you, uh, you see that, um, that the true table for this is true, 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 uh, false. And then the question is, okay, uh, well, can I conclude uh, P or Q from P? Well, it is very weird to do so, um, and this gives some people pause. There's some sort of like psychological resistance to to uh, saying that this is a, that this is a valid argument because it seems like a weird thing to do. If you if you know some fact P, uh, if you rephrase it in kind of epistemic terms, if you know some fact P, then uh, by uh, attaching a, an or Q onto it, you're sort of weakening uh, your statement. But though you are weakening your statement, it is valid. In other words, whenever this is true, this is also true, which we can see, of course by just focusing on the rows of the truth table in which P is true. It's these two rows of the truth table. So in all cases in which P is true, P or Q is true as well. Therefore, it is a, it is a safe uh, thing uh, sort of to, to, um, <coughs> to follow this argument. Uh, it will not uh, lead to problems uh, because it's, it's valid. And uh, if you just wanted to show that it was a tautology, then you would just add one more uh, column, uh, and you would see it's like true, error, true, true, error, true, false, and so automatically uh, we get that these are that these are all uh, true, and so so it is a tautology. Uh, this uh, goes there. Okay, uh, affirming the consequent. Once again, I think it's awkward to to write um, affirming the consequent as a single formula because. Uh, really, you should think of this as an argument, and the argument goes, I have a premise, if P then Q. I have a uh, other premise, Q, uh, may I conclude from this, uh, P. And if you really, really just don't think about it at all, then you might be thinking, yeah, oh, if P then Q, Q, therefore P. Um, so this is kind of like a, an extremely elementary logical uh, error. And um, this is the kind of thing you will maybe find, uh, this error in, in, in writing, if someone is being, you know, very, very not careful, okay? And uh, so how can we uh, demonstrate that, that this argument is invalid? Well, we have to convince people that you can't follow this argument in general, because it might be possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false. So I can make a truth table for this, um, but maybe it's faster to just uh, do it the fast way. <laughs> so the fast way is to say, um, did, they, did they specifically tell you to make a truth table? They probably did. Show. Oh no. Ooh. He says show. Perhaps using a truth table. Very interesting. In other words, he says if you're smart enough to figure out a way to not use a truth table, then, then you don't have to make one. And I think we're smart enough because uh, ultimately I'm trying to show that this argument is invalid. So I want to show that it's possible for these premises to be true, but the conclusion to be false. So therefore, I should assign false to P and true to Q, and how, uh, well now what? Well now, if P is false and uh, Q is true, then uh, this conditional automatically becomes true because false error, anything is true. And, and that's it, right? I did it. I showed uh, a way in which uh, both the premises are true. So now you can, you can write something if you really want to, like when uh, P is false, and Q is true, that's called a truth assignment, um, both premises are true, both premises are true, but um, the conclusion uh, is false. So this is an invalid argument. Okay, good. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Um, just a couple more little problems here at the end, which are about predicate logic. Um, hopefully they're pretty easy. Let's just keep the camera rolling. <laughs> All right, um, 67. So skipping ahead to that. Um, yeah. 
Here we go. 3A, 3-6-B, 3-9-B. Uh-oh. I hope I didn't assign too many problems. I bet I did. Three. Oh no, 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 no. These are actually kind of fun. They are a little time consuming, but they're not minus. They are like uh, deep. They're not deep, but they are helpful for you to clarify your mastery of quantifiers. So let's go. 3A through E. I did think deeply about whether I really wanted to assign all these problems, and I decided yes. So let's find out if I made the right decision. 3A says there exists an X and there exists a Y. That comma is kind of non standard. That gosset includes uh, such that uh, x equals 2 uh, and x times y uh, equals 4x. You know what? I'm going to pioneer a little bit more uh, in, in video editing or whatever. So I'm going to pause this, write all these problems on the board, and then do them really fast. Bye. Okay, we're back. Good. Uh, let's go. Directions for 3A. Let the universe of discourse be the set of real numbers. I call it the domain of discourse, but okay. Uh, in other words, the real numbers are the uh, set of objects uh, over which we will quantify. And, um, yeah. Translate each sentence into English. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Also, mm, determine the proper truth value for the statement. I am going to do that. I hope I, well... Okay, anyway, let's go. Um, what does this say? Well, curiously... Um, hold on one second. Let me just double check this. Yeah, sure. Uh, X, Y, Okay, so let's go. 3A. Do there exist... Does there exist an X and a Y such that X is 2 and X, Y is 4X? I say that the answer is yes. Um, okay, uh, how can you show me or convince me that there are such a pair of numbers? Well, of course, uh, x has to be 2, so just set x uh, equal to 2. Um, so that automatically uh, makes this um, conjunct uh, true. How do I make this conjunct true? Well, because uh, I can cancel the x's from both sides, uh, then that just means y is 4. So this is a little bit dumb, right? Set x equal to 2 and set y equal to 4. That's it. Uh, okay, so the answer to this one is, is, is just yes. What is, what is that? Determine the proper truth value uh, for the statement. So, um, so the answer to, to part A, uh, 3A is true. Okay, more. Um, for all x and for all y, x, y is 4x. Well, that is certainly false because I could, for example, uh, set x to be, I don't know, 1. Um, and if I set x to be 1, but if I set y to be 5, well then I have a false statement, right? It's because uh, then my left hand side is 5, but my right hand side is 4. So it's not true that for any possible variables x and y whatsoever, this statement will be true. Okay, that's pretty clear. C. Um, for all x, there exists a y such that x, uh, y equals 4x. Well, once again, I think that that is, um, hang on, no, I think that actually we are okay now. I think this is true, because um, no matter what x is, I can just set y equal to 4. So, um, what you're appreciating now, uh, hopefully when you were doing this problem, if not now, is that uh, when you write for all x there exists a y, the quantifier scope says that the y that you pick um, de can depend on the x. And so in other words, for any possible x, is there a y kind of response? That's what it means for this to come kind of uh, orthographically, you know, second. It's within this, 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 uh, there exists a y uh, part is within the scope of the quantifier uh, for all x. Okay, so what does that mean? So it's sort of like, it's sort of like for any x, um, here's what you do. Uh, well, you just set y equal to 4, and then that sentence is automatically just, uh, just true. Uh, because, um, then you just have, you know, 4x equals 4x. And so, uh, great. And, in fact, if you set, if x should happen to be 0, then y could be anything. But if x is anything that's not 0, then you have to set y equal to 4. So that's the precise dependency of y on x. Okay, I think some learning is happening here. Part D, uh, there exists an X um, such that for all Y, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's the same sentence, but now the 
quantifiers uh, have changed. Um, so now uh, we are saying, uh, does there exist a number uh, such that this sentence is true for all possible values of y? And the answer is yes. The, an the answer is uh, set x equal to zero, right? If you set x equal to zero, um, now uh, y can be, you know, whatever. That's, that's uh, essentially what is going on here. Um, you are uh, trying to figure out uh, whether the sentence is true or false. The answer is it's true because there is an x, specifically x equals zero. If x equals zero, then um, the sentence inside the brackets is automatically true regardless of what y is. So uh, once x is zero, then for any y, this is true. Okay, and part E uh, simply says, does there exist a pair of numbers x, y, such that x, y equals 4x? Certainly, yes. Um, for example, um, so this is, this is true, and now we say, uh, okay, for example, I could set x equal to, well, it's the same as, um, how is this different than what's above? It, it's really, it's really barely is. Um, yeah. So, so set, um, set, um, you know, set x equal to 1, say, and if x is 1, then you must set y equal to 4, uh, and y equal to 4. In fact, unless you happen to set x equal to 0, um, no matter what you set x to be, y has to be 4. But if you set x to be 0, then you could set y to be anything. But uh, all you need to do is find a single um, assignment. Uh, so you need to find a, a, just one value of x and one value of y that satisfies the sentence. So I gave my example to, to, to assert that this is true. Okay, hopefully you're learning about uh, how quantifiers work, if you didn't know already. Uh, this is not too hard, as long as you ignored my, uh, uh, the problem which said translate to English. I have to make a note to, you know, not do that. Um, okay, oh, maybe I, maybe I did? Man, I guess it's, I guess it's too late now anyway. Um, oh yeah, I did, shoo, good. I said, just say whether true or false and why. In other words, skip the translations, because that's, that's too, that's too much tedious work. Okay, uh, good, 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 good. If you're watching this video, then, then you're learning at least. Uh, this is the same kind of thing, but subtly different problem. Let the universe of, of discourse be the set of integers now. So now it's, it's integers uh, that we are quantifying over. And uh, so that's kind of like our, our world. Uh, so let's go. Once again, we're doing parts B3 of number six. It's the exact same sentence, but the quantifiers are changing. And so things are changing. Um, let's go. Is it true that uh, for all x and for all y that, uh, that this is true? Well, okay, you can kind of like cancel an x, y from both sides, and therefore um, this is kind of saying if you cancel an x, y uh, from both sides, then this just says uh, 3 equals 4x. And is it just always true for any x that 3 equals 4x? Um, no. In fact, I think I want to say that, uh, yeah, that's just not true because we're, we're in the world of integers. So it's, this is just certainly false, this first um, statement, that for all x and for all y, this is true. I mean, you know, the, maybe the simplest thing to do is, uh, you know, set, set x and y equal to 1, for example. Um, and uh, if, you, if you set x equal to 1 and you, you set y equal to 1, then the left-hand side is 3 and the right-hand side is 4, so that's just false. Okay, next, b, or I mean c. For all x, there exists a y such that this is true. I bet this is going to turn out to be false also because suppose x is 1. Right? Set x equal to 1. Well, if you set x equal to 1, then your statement uh, reduces to... Um, hold on, I take it back. No, I got tricked. This sentence, in fact, is true. Because uh, no matter what x you pick, I always have a, a choice of y, um, which will make this sentence true. That is, y equals 0. Haha. -ha. Okay, so C is, is, is true, and the answer is, uh, for any x, for any x, just set y equal to zero. And, um, yeah, then the sentence is just automatically true. Great. Okay, there exists an x such that for all y, this sentence is true. Okay, this is the one 
that I'm now feeling is false. No, this sentence is also true because there does exist an x for which this will be true for any y, and that is, again, setting x equal to zero. So this problem is either silly or really cool, I don't know. Um, but uh, for, um, so, so set x equal to zero, so set x equal to zero and y equal to anything, and automatically you get a sentence which is true. So therefore there does exist an x, specifically x equals zero, um, for which this sentence is true for any y. Uh, because as soon as x is zero, the sentence is automatically true regardless of what y is. And finally, um, is there a um, other pair of numbers uh, for which this sentence is true? Absolutely yes. And uh, what are those numbers? Well, I guess there's a bunch. I guess uh, either x or y must be zero. Um, because if neither x nor y is zero, then you need 3 to equal 4x, which can't be true for integers. So therefore, you know, your options are to like uh, set, set x equal to zero, and you know, then y can be anything you want, or uh, that, that, that's it. Uh, I might as well just give one uh, example, because that's all that's required is to give, to give one to one example uh, of an x and a y which make it true. So those were, okay, that was kind of fun. All right, uh, finally, 9b, which apparently there was like an error in the back of the book or something, asks you to um, write negations of the following quantified statements, move the negation as far inside the predicate as possible, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we have this, uh, we have this statement and uh, basically just do some, do some stuff with it. So I put a negation out front, now I'm just gonna ride that negation uh, through. Uh, before I do this, let me, um, so let me uh, be careful in the way that Gossett's answer key wasn't, and let's rewrite this uh, P arrow Q sentence as not a P, so not, f, x, y, and g, x, z, um, cha, uh, or, oops, uh, or h, y, z, cha, cha, cha. So yeah, that's just applying a little bit of propositional logic, and maybe just also, even before I get, start doing anything with quantifiers, Maybe I'll just also apply, no, I think I won't. Um, okay, so now let's, let's start. Uh, what, are we gonna, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna distribute this negation through. When you distribute the negation through that there exists, it flips to for all x, and now the negation, let's just do this in one step, is sitting in front of the for all, so now it flips the for all, so we get there exists a y. Now we factor the negation through the, through the uh, for all z, and we get there exists a z, such that not, Okay, and now we have uh, everything that was here, which was not f, x, y, and g, x, z, cha, cha, um, uh, or h, y, z. Okay, and finally, uh, this becomes for all x, there exists a y such that there exists a z, and now we get a bracket in here, and this negation gets factored through, so it cancels it, and we get um, assuming I did this correctly, now I'm like doubting myself, but I think I shouldn't. Um, yeah, this becomes f x y and g x z uh, in parentheses and oh I see. Um, so the negation comes through, make, makes that negation go away, and flips that to an and, and not h y z. Okay, so there we go. Um, it turns out that, you know, since, since um, conjunctions are uh, basically associative and commutative, I don't really need these parentheses, and so that's it. Okay, good. That was, uh, I think, the short part of the homework. So we are done. Goodbye.